So let's start the half episode with a fashion rundown. Jackie, you're giving me soft stud tees in these leather culottes. Who the hell wears leather culottes other than Kim Tacky ass Kimball? Lord old yeller with those curls and that dress. The middle part of the dress is cute, but the rest of it is a fucking mess. And I wish she would get that head together. I mean, them little Shirley Temple curls, shitty temple curls, that's what they were. They were shitty and around her temples. Then again, I'm not surprised that Simone's dress is a miss because Simone is loud and tacky, just like her dress. Quad. I don't know what reality show you want to move to next, but this here is married to medicine. This is Bravo. You save that naked leotard sequin shit for a VH1 reunion. That's some basketball wife shit. You want to be a baller's wife? Because that's what you're given. That shit was not cute. It wasn't appropriate. I mean, it just, you didn't fit in. And it didn't look good. Couldn't even get the proper shade of nude. Also, your hair looked like shit. And usually, well, your wigs are tolerable, but today I just couldn't. Heffaly was dressed by Pillsbury because her roles were clearly the star of the outfit. She was giving me crescent teas, bustin' biscuit. Tanya got a little bit of loving hip-hop bullshit on, too, with that tit strap nighty. That's cute when Tommy wears it, but uh, you a little too long in the tooth for that. Not on television. Round the house, sure, but not on television. You looked ill-clad. You didn't look sexy. You just looked ill-clad. Contestant is giving me Marlo Hampton tees with all this extra fresh hair that still smells like the bag. You look great that night at the party when you just did your simple regular hair. You don't need extra bundles, honey. You don't need extra bundles, and you never need to wear it wavy. And, of course, Mariah rounds it out by giving us her usual amphibian tees. So let's start with what we're fuckless about. They gonna open up with their chitlins. I don't give a one shit, two shit, red shit, blue shit about any of your offspring. I don't care that Tanya's fucking her husband again now that he didn't pay the taxes off. I don't give a shit about that. I don't give a shit about Contessa or her whining or contestant in general. Also, let's stop the bullshit with Heffaly's spiritual journey. She's a caustic cow and a hateful heifer, and everybody saw it. Then she gonna whine about weight issues to Toya. After she done called Toya fat all season, well, you know, I'm working on my weight too, I'm hangry. Don't nobody care. We don't give a shit if your four stomachs are full or empty. Then she tried to have this sick ass, you threaten my life, you threaten my life, bust a cap in my ass, you threaten my life. Nobody threaten your life. Your life doesn't have enough worth to threaten. And your ass is so wide, and you've got such a thick hide. If a cap was busted in your ass, I'd bet it bounce. We also had a pathetic little moment where Mariah was talking about, I have a fan base, I got a fan base, I got subscribers, people support me. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't with it. Nobody gives a shit about you, Mariah. We all like to hate you, but we don't enjoy you. We're not looking forward to seeing you back next season, but we need a stunted simpleton to snicker at. Don't believe me? Ask Sheree Whitfield. But you're only on this show because you're an EP and Bravo can't seem to get rid of you. You are a barnacle on the boat of this show. A green eyesore and a burden. And then after Heffaly drew a little mustache on her irritating poster, she gonna say, so what, I need security for my jury and my fur? Don't nobody want your tacky ass jury. It might be real, but it's too tacky to resell. And you give me cloudy diamond tees. Your heart is cloudy, so your diamonds are probably cloudy too. Now let's move on to the shit we give a mid fuck about. Because that was the shit we just, y'all could have kept it. Could have kept it. Now we in the mid-fuck section. They did talk about how their fame affects their practice. Contessa quit. Simone started on, well, first and foremost, I am a human. And it was like, okay, yeah, we get it. You fine with it. And Jackie was kind of come see, come saw. Heffaly said, my mom called me a bitch before. And I was like, you know what? That explains a lot. You're from ain't shit. So you ain't never gonna be shit. 
because you don't even know what shit is. Now, I thought Toy and Contessa was going to get into it over the shade Contessa threw for the Back in the Black party, but Toy was just like, look, you ain't going to get me hot under the collar over something the producers told me to do. You knew here. You knew. You don't, under you don't understand. Every plot line don't get approved. You got to go with a sure thing. <laughs> you know production had them throw that party. You know Toya and Eugene were like, really? We really have to throw this party? And production was like, yes. Yes. We have to see the check written. We have to have a party. We got to celebrate. Come on. You know that was production. And the last thing is Mariah wanted to defend herself saying, well, Heavenly Heffley wasn't even on the show the first season when the shit went down with my mama. She may not have been on the show, but we were all on Facebook Live. You put everyone's business out in the street. We've seen you talk about Quad, Quad's mama, Quad's upbringing. And then when Heffley came on the show, you went in on her, on her breath. On her teeth, I mean, granted, these are all valid issues that she has, but you didn't have to say anything on your Facebook Live. But don't act like it was some behind-the-scenes shit when you was putting everything on Front Street. So now we're at the high fucks, the meat of the episode. Toya throwing Quad under the bus. <laughs> When Andy said, now you say you're your husband's everything. Do you think Quad is Greg's everything? And Toya said, mm-mm, no, because she ain't give him their baby, and that's all that nigga asked for. And looked dead in Quad's face when she said it, and then Quad going to pipe up with her little, well, you know, we weren't really in a place, and it wasn't a conducive environment to having a child. And Toya said, you know what, that may be right, but that resentment that you say is causing all this friction, it started from the fact that you've been putting off this baby for 50 years. Toya said, I see you, and I'm letting and I ain't letting you squirm out of this one, Heffa. Have that child. Or at least be honest with yourself about why you ain't having one. Now, Contessa is a doctor and an accomplished pilot. You may not be the best television, but you a real life Wonder Woman. They just ain't using you right. You should be flying into some shit. A helicopter, Heffa. I'm here for it. I can barely bicycle, so you better go on, girl. Toya cracked me up when she said, now look, I might be able to talk to my dad about my romantic life, but he ain't gonna turn around and say, now Toya, that's some whole shit. <laughs> oh, God. Heffily cussing out Mariah for all of the Facebook shade and her 40 fake Twitter accounts. You have 40 fake <laughs> And you know Mariah Petty enough to have enough emails, phone numbers, and burner phones to create 40 fake Twitter. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Giving you bot tees. Quad joins heavily in going in on Mariah for her 45-minute symposiums <laughs> on other people on Facebook. A 45-minute symposium. <laughs> Quad. A fucking plus. So, of course, Mariah is going to cling to the fact that Heffley drew on her sad little poster to make that a plot line to not join the other ladies. Mariah, why you want to be on the show so bad, but then when you know you got to be in play and be a part of the shade, it's, oh, 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 it's too much. This is too ghetto. You too ghetto. Shoot Lucy too ghetto. And finally, the biggest bombshell of the episode. Now, we knew Simone and Cecil were getting divorced, but they really divorced. That shit's two weeks to finalization. That shit's probably finalized now. Did they done? I, you never want to see anybody get divorced, but if it's going to be healthy for them, they need to move on. She needs to find a man who's looking for a yeller, and, and I don't know what he needs. An exfoliant for starters, though. Now, before we half on off, let's talk about the best shade of the episode. Contessa to Heffley when she said, if you're capable, if you're capable, when asked to spell her name. And I don't think Heffley did get around to spelling it. We were about to have a bovine spelling bee. Toya shading the fuck out of herself when she said Eugene isn't really interested in her oral skills. I guess you're on your black china. Or maybe it's those buck teeth. I don't know. Simone could have that issue, too. Maybe it's that. Or maybe it's just that Tanya's as lazy in bed as she is out of it. Quad for the 45-minute symposium shade. That was A-fucking-plus. 
and heffily for drawing the shit on Mariah's poster, knowing it would get her riled up. I got to say, when you can get your enemy that angry and off balance, you're doing your job. But Heffa, while you're drawing horns on her, don't forget to put a mustache and a beard on yourself for that bullshit in Barbados. If she's the devil, you're a demon. And Heffley gave good shade when she said, oh, I'll apologize for defacing her door. Yes, because your apologies don't mean anything. And that is the real gag. Well, I'd like to thank you so much for joining me. And as always, tell a kin, tell a friend, tell that Heffa you hate. The episode opens as we return to the workroom after the most shocking eliminene of our lives. Coulda did it. You're not gonna read that? Miss Uneducated. Coulda did it. I mean, honey, if I stop to talk about every unintelligent thing Kennedy Davenport said, I wouldn't have a show. It would just be calling out Kennedy. And nobody wants to hear that. BB Disappointment Bonet. You know, I have seen some weak bitch moves in my time. But to say out of respect for Bendela, I'ma keep my own ass out the hot seat. Now I know you're from Cameroon. So why are you pulling a Nigerian scam on us with not giving us this infamame? Tell us the truth, bitch. And get that shit off your head. Honey, bowl cuts don't look good on white people. They sure don't look good on niggas. Looking like somebody's dyke auntie. Oh, Jesus. And Kennedy, Kennedy, uh, do something with them edges. Pray over them, holy water. I don't know. That hair hope growth oil, but something. Something. Uh, Trixie, you haven't had to show a lipstick. What have you won? Did she win shit? Oh, she won something. Oh, okay. She's just so damn forgettable, I forgot. Uh, you see, BB, if you had said, look, I don't want to stir up any more shit, if you had been more honest about it and been like, it's not going to do anything good, all it's going to do is make one of you dislike me, and it was a difficult decision. I could have respected that, but this, for Bendela, uh-uh, own your shit. <laughs> Shangela telling it, Shangela is telling it. She like, oh no, you just trying to not make no more enemies, bitch. Because we already see your ain't shitness. Your slip is showing, and it doesn't match your outfit. All right, so uh, who do you think was in BB's bra? I think that she would have saved Aja to make amends. But who would she have sent home? Bendela. She would have sent home Bendela. No, wait, she couldn't send home Bendela. That's right. Um... Maybe she would have sent home Kennedy. Yeah, and Kennedy is a vengeful bitch. And that's why she said, uh-uh, honey, I didn't see how you acted with milk. You gonna send me home first chance you get, so I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. Shangela, she could have taken it. Uh, what's his name? Um, Trixie probably would have been all right. So we know it's Kennedy. We know it's Kennedy. Oh, Rue, this blue suit. Oh, my God. Now, this is an Alexander Rogers piece if I've ever seen one. And it's Nancy Pelosi, also in a fabulous shade of blue. Nancy Pelosi's hair is beyond on point. Kennedy, how high are you? I mean, I'm on here high, so I ain't even complaining. I just want to know how high are you? Are you higher than Akuta Brown? Akuta Brown. Akuta Brown. Kennedy, higher, 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 higher. Said she higher, 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 higher. Oh, you're higher, 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 higher than Akuta Brown. Akuta Brown. Higher than Akuta Brown. Mm hmm. Higher than Akuta. Of course, BB's the queen. Yawn. Yep, BB doing BB. You better tell it, Shangela. Oh, Trixie's doing well. Yeah, she does look better. That makeup's toned down a bit. It actually looks like a cheek. Okay, Morgan, you can head right on back home. You always fuck up an entrance. Actually, swans do hiss, so I'm gonna give them that noise. I'm gonna give them that noise. Don't fuck with no swans. They bout it, bout it. Oh, this is the last episode before the crown. Oh, they do it with the top four. Oh, I feel like they cheated this out of episode, but I mean, honestly, this, this season's been kind of shoddy, if you ask me. 
I see why Bendel LeBow bowed out. So, Kennedy, starting to deal with the real. This is why I said the heifer was jealous of Milk, because Milk has 750,000 Instagram followers to her 125. That's why you got so upset that Milk did not like your drag, because you're like, I want to be one of the popular girls. I want to be on Fashion Week. Well, good luck. Honey, you're a second thought queen because you're a second rate queen. And that's just true tea. The people have spoken. This ain't just me. She said it herself. Maybe you need to look within and see what you're doing that is missing the mark. What are those girls that everybody loves doing that you're not doing? What's missing? <laughs> I can't read. Ah! Adaptability. Talent. Talent, adaptability, intelligence, education. I'm not even going to say intelligence. I will say education. Uh, and friendliness. You don't seem friendly. You don't seem genuine. You seem like one of those old, bitter Southern drag queens giving me Nina Bonina teas. Oh, my God. You know what, Kennedy? You know what, Kennedy? This this sums it up. This sums it up. This sums everything that I was saying in the earlier review up. Kennedy said, I want to be that queen where everyone immediately knows me. And you will never be that queen unless you up your fucking looks. That's why Milk and Thorgy are light years ahead of you in the fan game because they are noticeable on the street because their looks are nothing like we've seen in drag. Your looks you can see on every pageant flyer from here to Sissyville. I used to live in North Carolina, and Sunday there was drag shows at a club called Legends. And I saw Kennedy Davenport's come and go week after week. They had one just like her, Ebony Summers. I remember her, and she would get on stage and do a high kick and give arms, arms, arms. But there really wasn't anything else after that. These other girls are offering not just futuristic, incredible fashions, but personality. No, some of them can't pop pussy, but they can sure write music. So yeah, bring some more creativity other than dancing and, and not even being able to do choreography. If you'd step your pussy up, you might step your fan game up. You work hard. You don't work smart. That's your problem, girl. That's your problem. Okay, Rue, I can fuck with this dress. Giving me a little bit of kimono. Martin scores sissy. Honey, don't recycle Will and Grace jokes on here. Come up with something fresh. I remember when Jack said that on Will and Grace. You ain't gonna pull it with me. BB, that looked like something Kennedy would have had on. Kennedy, that was okay. Okay, Morgan. Shangela came to win. Wow. Ben! Wait. Trixie, that is everything. Oh, Morgan, they could have left your ass at home. Shangela was really good. She was kind of playing the background, but she was killing it. This wasn't a good challenge. I mean, they really couldn't. It was, it was a fucking hodgepodge ass mess. It was so disorganized. It was disorganized since it came out the pussy. This is a half-baked idea. Who's producing this shit? Somebody needs to be fired. Kennedy Davenport has never seen La La Land. She doesn't know what a nuance is, and she doesn't know who that white heifer you mentioned is. I forget her name, too. They just said it, and it just went right out my mind. So Morgan and Shangela did the shittiest on the acting challenges, but everybody's runway was okay. Not Shangela, Kennedy, I'm sorry. While Shangela and Trixie are in the top, this will be a good lip sync, but you know Shangela gone win, so I wonder who's gonna heifer on home. I'm betting it's BB. You know what? That's a good idea. I'm going to cuss Cuomo's ass out this commercial break. I got nothing but time. And free minutes, honey. Free minutes. See, Kennedy, this attitude, don't try nothing new. Stick to what you know. That's why you're not where you want to be, because you're sticking with what you know, and you know very little. You've been the most consistently safe. You ain't won shit. Not shit. Oh, yeah. You won that one they threw you. She's talking about a meme and she pronounces it Mimi. See, this is the type of ignorance, ignorance I was talking about. <laughs> you thought Chi Chi Devane looked stupid. You, you, too, too, bitch. You, you, too, too. Mm-hmm. 
Kennedy said, well, with BB, I kind of put her where milk was. Yup, keeping it real personal. We see why BB ain't say shit and she still fucked over. Yes, Rue for telling people how to contact their representation. And give them what for? I kind of feel it's really unfair for Morgan to be in the top four and in the running for the crown when you haven't been here the whole time and you just kind of slipping in at the end and you'll always run around saying, I'm a top four queen, I'm a top four queen. You ain't earned that shit. You a first home filler heifer. That's what you is, a first home filler. Trixie looks amazing for this lip sync. Shangela, this witchy poo hair. Ooh, God, you should have left that shit at home. This wig screams Party City. Top shelf, but Party City. I think Morgan's going home. Morgan or BB. See, I could see Shangela keeping Morgan because Morgan's not a threat. I would play it smart. I'd be like, BB, bye, bitch. All right, Shangela's reveal. Oh, oh. Shangela. <laughs> Bitch, you did that. That is hilarious. That is really funny. Oh, my God. Uh, I got to give it to Shangela. I have never seen this. This is so new. I mean, Trixie looks great, but oh, my God. <laughs> Shangela. Shangela said, bitch, I'm winning this. Send BB's ass. Send BB's ass. Send BB's ass. Send BB's ass. Shangela is just killing it. Shangela, I mean, that was that was a lip sync for you too. That was for the ages, honey. That was incredible. I mean, you outthought her before she could even take her first dance step. You outthought her. I feel like Trixie wasted a really good outfit. I mean, for that sad little performance. Morgan, you are and will always be a forgettable filler queen. Take your ass. Take your ass. Aja should have been back, and BB should have been gone. Fuck this, fuck this. All right, well, that was the shit, so I'm going to see you next week when they crown the heifer. And speaking of heifers, tell a kin, tell a friend, tell that heifer you hate.